Hello everyone and welcome to Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. That is one subtitle too many, I think, but it is part of the Black Ops subseries, so they've kind of got to do what they got to do. They could call it Black Ops 5, but then it takes place in between 1 and 2, so that might be a bit confusing, so I guess we'll have to allow it. I am a, I'm a long-time Call of Duty fan, you may or may not know. I've played all of the COD campaigns. This is number 17, I think? Call of Duty 17 or something? So, uh, yeah, been, it's been a long long time there was a period of time where all I played was Call of Duty uh, and yeah I, I've never missed a campaign and I never will so let us jump into it uh, realism oh boy <laughs> back in my day veteran was the highest difficulty uh, we're just gonna go regular <laughs> I'm, I'm just here for that yearly burst of adrenaline with crazy set pieces and the like Love them. Love them. That eight hour just madness <laughs> that is a Call of Duty campaign. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon our adversaries in today's world do not have. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. Some U.S. intelligence analysts believe America is already in a state of war with the Soviet Union. Are Soviet spies living among us? Fifty-two American citizens have been taken hostage at the American Embassy in Tehran. An unnamed White House official claims that a Cold War disaster could be just around the corner. Mr. President, we have two names linked to the hostage situation. Arash Kadavar and Kasim Javadi. Just give the word. It's time to send a message. There will be no more hostages. Alrighty. It also helps that Black Ops is my favorite subseries of sure Call of Duty. Police, Adler? This guy's done more for less. He'll look the other way. So I'm very happy we're going to be meeting old favorite characters. Also, holy shit, that's a reminiscent intro of Black Ops 1. That flame, I'm pretty sure that's how Black Ops 1 started with the with the lighter being flicked on. You could join us, Hans. Nowhere left to run you with Mason. Us. We cleared a move on a target. Kasim is in his apartment, but he's well protected. I can keep my men out of the area for 15 minutes. I hope you brought an army. We brought enough. Pleasure doing business with you, huh? Come on. Woods is itching for a dust. Yes, we Woods. Let him down. Love my boy Woods. 81. Okay, okay. Let's get back into it. It's been a while. Been a year, I guess, since the last COD, COD campaign. We're on the clock, Woods. Let's not keep this in waiting. Hey, my dude. Hey, Mason. Party favors are in the trunk. Okay, okay, what are we going for? Hmm. Yeah, let's go with that. Oh, shit. Should probably think he's safe. I thought you could swap the pistol, you can't. It just swapped the main run. Oh well, whatever. Safe ain't one of them. Current objectives. Follow my dude. Okay. You really need to take this son of a bitch alive, Adler? Kasim has info we need. Everyone else can take a powder. Apartment's just up ahead. It won't let me raise my gun, by the way. <laughs> In case anyone's wondering why I'm not checking the sights. Am I going first? I us 15 minutes. We need to hit Kasim hard and fast. Let's go. I think I need to uh, lower my sensitivity. We'll see how this goes, but I think my horizontal sensitivity is too high. Light it up, up, up. Go, go, go! Okay, feels good, feels good.
Will he let me swap my pistol now? Good. <laughs> okay. Next. <laughs> Who wants some? You want some? I'll give it you. Get back here. Oh, hello. Takedown system. Initiate a brutal melee kill or grab an enemy as a human shield. Press to initiate takedown. R for body shield. Oh, yep. That'll get the job done. Okay, they're taking more bullets than I expect. <laughs> I think Modern Warfare had a faster time to kill. That was very accurate, I'll have you know. <laughs> Go on, stick your head out. Oh, that's Woods. Sorry, Woods. You know I love you, buddy. Bit of friendly fire going on there. Some of my own. Fuck. <laughs> that is uh, <laughs> that is not how that was supposed to go. Forget that I said I have some of my own. I don't. I was joking. Ignore me. Ooh. Oh, I've got to reload that. <laughs> wow. Could you not, bruh? Okay, no grenades. Got it, got it. <laughs> Okay, that'll get the job done. Faux show. Get back here, sir. Woods, you're blocking me. Yeet! Oh, shit! <laughs> yep, that'll get the job done. You're up, mate. Hello, friend. Uh, uh, hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, dialogue choices in my Call of Duty game? What? Tell us where Arash is and you'll live. I just handle the money? I have no idea where Arash is. I don't think you understand the situation. Oh, bye bye. You Americans have rules? You have rules! You took hostages. The rules changed. You have to tell my friend something, or I can't stop him from throwing you over. Wait, wait, wait. He's in Turkey. He's meeting someone in Trap Zone Airfield tomorrow night. <laughs> you could just throw him at this point. Time to join your friend. We've got plenty of cars. <laughs> Who's Arash meeting with? Oh, oh, I swear. I swear I don't know. They only communicate with coded messages. Evidence collected. Operation Red Circus 1 out of 3. Interesting. Release, throw, or capture. Capture, you're coming with us. Could potentially get more info out of him. This is not... Oh. Alright, let's load him up. We'll find his voice soon enough. Let me know if you need some help looking for it. Hudson, we're bringing you a present. Now, He's interestingly... 
I believe this game works like Black Ops 2, where there are multiple uh, paths and endings to go down. How long before we get a rush? The team arrived in Turkey a few hours ago. They should be in position shortly. Because Black Ops 2 had a ton of different uh, paths to go down. Turkey, Tramps on Airfield. And I got every single outcome, which involved replaying the game a whole ton of times. So you have to make very specific choices at points. But uh, I'm guessing that's the first one. Just up ahead. Let's go find this shithead. God, that is that is the woods look that I remember <laughs> from the good old days. Priorities to ID a rush before things go hot. I'm kind of getting used to the sensitivity. I might keep it there a little. Maybe turn. You know what? Let's turn it down one. Let's turn it down. Do 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 horizontal. Really, it's all, it's only at four. Let's pop it down to three. See now that feels slow. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Mason, check it out. Any sign of a rush? That's not him. Yeah, I don't remember what he looks like, not gonna not gonna lie. Is this our boy? A rush might be in the truck. That him? Oh! Oh, nighty night, bitch. Oh, shit. I call BS. That's fine. We'll do it the old fashioned way. I just, okay, I didn't think I'd, uh, Wait, where'd it go? Oh, shit! That's... Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I I went around and I was like, where's he gone? Oh, he's he's driving away in his plane. Okay, this has gone better. <laughs> We're not... I was like, oh no, what do I do? And then it was too late. <laughs> go, go, gadget, go. Get back here! Oh, okay. Come on, come on. Use the RC. Oh, it's been so long since I used the RCXT. Vroom, vroom, motherfuckers. Oh, come on. You don't need to pause it to give me the controls. Accelerate, steer, and boost. Yeah, sure. Whoa. Oh. This is going great. Oh shit! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh fuck. Oh, mission accomplished. Just as planned. <laughs> this is why I love the COD campaigns, man. They're just so fucking ridiculous and insane. Just pure adrenaline. I love it. Uh, 
hostages. It was never about the hostages. Nice try. Uh, his plan is already on the way. Uh, you won't be able to stop him this time. Stop who? Perseus. Bullshit. Perseus is dead. <laughs> All this time and you didn't even know. <laughs> Perseus will watch the west back. Hudson don't want to hear about this. Let's sweep the tarmac for survivors and get to Langley. Who the fuck is Perseus? <laughs> no idea, my dude. <laughs> but I have a feeling we're gonna find out. 1943. Detailed information from the Manhattan Project was stolen from Los Alamos by the Russian spy known as Perseus. 1968. Vietnam War. Viet Cong soldiers orchestrated by Perseus attempted to steal an American-made nuclear bomb from a U.S. firebase. Five days ago, while on a mission, we acquired intel that Perseus is in play again and planning an attack on the West. Perseus. The CIA's analysts consider him to be the single largest threat to the free world. Mr. Hudson. We're all aware of Perseus. We're also aware he's more myth than fact. I mean, personally, I think he's nothing more than the Russian boogeyman. General Haig, allow me to introduce the man I suited to respond to that. CIA clandestine special officer, Russell Adler. He's one of the few people who even come close to capturing Perseus. Uh, Mr. Adler, why should we take this Perseus threat seriously? You don't have to, sir. <laughs> yeah, then a lot of innocent people are gonna die. Why do you say that? Sir, every time Perseus has come into play, it shifted the balance of the Cold War. After 13 years of silence, if he's active, something big is gonna happen. Something that will affect the free world. Mr. President, sir. Mr. President. Mr. President, this is Jason Hudson and Russell Adler. I know their names. Who do you think approved their last mission? Is the threat real? Yes, sir, we believe it is. Can you stop Perseus? We can, sir. I've already submitted the requisition for my team. Sir, their requests are highly irregular. Most likely illegal. If the press gets a hold... What the hell are you talking about? You know who we are? Every mission we go on is illegal. Sergeant Woods, plausible deniability is the backbone of our work. Al, we're talking about preventing an attack on the free men and women of the world. Give Mr. Adler whatever he wants. Gentlemen, you've been given an important task. Protecting our very way of life from a great evil. There is no higher duty. There is no higher honor. And while few people will know of your struggles, rest assured, the entire free world will benefit. I know you won't fail us. Five weeks later. This is Hudson. How long until we have a lead on Perseus? They're about to get started. Adler's in West Berlin. He should be at the safe house soon. Do you trust him? <laughs> I'm not the one you should be asking, Black. What about his team? It's a strong Black team. is a new character, right? I don't remember Sims, that Azalea, name. Even pulled some strings to get Helen Park from MI6. We'll get them Mason and Wood soon. I'm not so sure about Park. She and Adler have that business from before. Of course he wants her there. And the new one. Well, no, don't get me started. That's the one we need to keep our eyes on. Mason Woods and Hudson were the uh, the holy trinity of Black Ops. <laughs> I don't think I don't think the actual person Black is uh, someone we know. Central Intelligence Agency. Well, what is this? First name classified. Last name classified. Oh shit! Are we are we making a character? Wow, they're really pulling out all the stops with this one. Um, 
<laughs> what should we what should we call them? Sixteen characters. Uh, let's call them Shooty McShoot Hands. No. Uh, <laughs> let's call him <laughs> Big. Guns. <laughs> Place of birth. Big Guns comes from Europe. Uh, he, he's a white boy like me. Uh, he's a dude. Military background. That'll be MI6 then. Uh... Prior to joining Russell Adler's squad in 1967, Bell served with MI6, reaching the rank of Senior Squad Leader. Operations Involvement Classified. Psychological Profile. Hello. Oh, no bo bonuses. Bonuses. What? No bonuses applied. Aiming speed increased by 100%. Trusts no one. Tends to interpret the actions of others as hostile. There's 15 of these. Bullet damage increased 25%. Hello. Reliable in execution, through though questionable in results. Exhibits a low to medium magnitude of cognitive dissonance. Lone Wolf, initial sprint boost duration three times as long. Prefers to act independently, oftentimes questions authority. Professional, full movement speed while using ADS, highly regimented. Sees team members as mission assets only, lacks empathy. Fearless, received explosive damage reduced by 50%, will disregard threats even in the face of immediate danger. Ammo capacity increased by one clip, always planning ahead, dedicated to following orders, that could be very nice. Lethal and tactical equipment capacity increased by two. That could be very, very nice. Always expects the worst, over prepares for a negative outcome. Reloading speed increased 50%. Oh, again, that's lovely. It's probably going to be that one. Overly reactive, prefers to escalate conflicts through physical means. Uh, highly resourceful, survivor, health increased 25%. Just, that would be useful on like veteran. Adaptable to any environment or situation. Calm under pressure, pain flinch reduced by 90%. Wow. Outstanding mental aptitude, a highly effective agent when focused. Methodical, weapon kick reduced. Systematic in thought, approach, and execution. Dependable, but also predictable. Relentless, rate of fire increased by 25%. Pop that on an LMG. Can become fixated on accomplishing the mission at all costs. Dependable, damage taken when stationary, reduced by 30%. Has a team first mentality, always last to leave the fight. And impatient, hip firing, more accurate while moving. Shoot first, think later, wants to take the fight to the enemy. So it would be between more bullet damage... Uh, more clips or uh, reloading speed increase 50%. And I think it's going to be reload speed increased by 50%. That was always my first go-to perk in multiplayer back in the day when all I played every day after school was uh, was COD multiplayer. It would always be, what was it called? Quick Hands or something? I can't remember now. It's been, it's been so, I haven't played COD multiplayer in years and years and years now. But the fast reload perk was always the go-to. So let's keep that going. And what have we got here? Oh, shit. You can take a second psychological profile. Oh, well, in that case, give me the fucking... Uh... Did I go past it? Give me... There we go. Bullet damage increased by 25%. Yeah. Absolutely. Confirm that bad boy. Once you confirm, you'll be able... not be able to change your character's personnel profile. Sounds good to me. This is a, such a good start, man. They've absolutely nailed this opening. Welcome to West Berlin. Happy to be here. CIA Safe House E9. Die Landemann. Park. Adler. Sup, Park? Bell. What history do you two have? Is it history or is it history? You know, kind of feel like I should be told. Sup. A surge in Russian Burger shadow town. In the last 48 hours. The CIA and the DOD have tapped their inside sources for anything substantial. So far, there are no leads on the first year. Could you speak up? MI6 has come up empty-handed as well. And we'll have to start somewhere. So we're going back here. Vietnam, 1968. One of our closest encounters with Perseus. Shit. Some part of me always knew that mission wasn't done with us. Pull up everything we've got on the attack in Da Nang and run it past Park. She'll cross-reference it with MI6. We're looking for code names, encrypted transmission, Russian activity with NVA, anything that could be a lead. Good. Bell, this is where you come in. So Your MI6 experience helped our team back in Nam. 
I'm counting on it once again. Head to the evidence board. Retrace our steps through Denag. Anything that could give us a lead on Perseus. Alrighty. The evidence board. Use the evidence board to select the next mission, replay previous missions, or examine evidence. When you see this icon, new evidence is available that can assist you in the next mission and more. Perseus. The CIA is seeking the whereabouts and plan of the Soviet operative known as Perseus. Examine evidence. Hello. Photo of Perseus. Still at large. The Central Intelligence Agency knows little of the figure it has dubbed Perseus. Records of his actions date back to the end of World War II, and suspected appearances are documented up through the Vietnam War. After that, only silence. This photo is the only clear likeness in the agency's archives. Analysts estimate its date from the mid to late 1950s. So, a good, like, 30 years ago? Interestingly, because well, this was the 80s, right? Interestingly, some sometime around that same period, the elusive Soviet operative began to refer to himself using the Perseus moniker, perhaps as a point of pride, or was it a mocking nod to his pursuers? If that's the only photo they have of him, then I feel like there's a good chance that might not even be him. <laughs> like, if he's a super smart dude, which it appears to be setting up that he is, he could have easily made it so that they got this photo and thought it's him, but it isn't. Um, letter from Emerson Black. Black Ops. This mission authorization telegram was sent to Russell Adler from Emerson Black. That's who Black is then. The deputy strategist within the CIA's Directorate of Operations. Photo of Trabzon Airfield. A delivery for Perseus. After Russell Adler's confrontation with Arash Kadivar, analysis of Trabzon Airfield revealed that Kadivar may have been moving weapons to Perseus. It is speculation though, as the recipient and destination remain unclear. What is clear is that Kadavar is somehow connected to Perseus, and Kadavar appeared to have knowledge of an impending attack of ambiguous nature. Cool. And then a bunch of stuff we don't know yet. Uh, nothing we can look at around here. This was the one we did. Nowhere left to run. Photo of Arash Kadivar, a key Middle Eastern asset for Perseus. Arash Kadivar was born moments after the Allied invasion of Iran on August 25th, 1941. As Kadivar neared his 12th birthday, the Prime Minister of Iran was overthrown in a Western-sponsored coup. Kadivar's father, a supporter of Mohammad Mossadegh, Mos 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 not sure how you pronounce that exactly, regime, was imprison imprisoned, tortured, and summarily executed. The young Kadivar entered his teenage years with a powerful anti-imperialist anger. Later, he would begin to reluctantly associate with agents of the USSR, who also had an interest in ousting the American-backed Shah. Kadavar showed himself capable of exploiting religious zealotry if it served his political purposes. It is unknown when his relationship with Perseus began, but Russell Adler ended it on the tarmac at Trabzon Airfield. And Kasim Javadi, The Apprentice. Kasim Javadi was born in northwest Iran in 1946, inside the short-lived USSR puppet state of the Azerbaijan People's Government. He grew up in poverty but showed exceptional promise as a student. At age 18, he left his family to attend the University of Tehran, intent on becoming a doctor, but dropped out dissatisfied. Kasim became increasingly attracted to the, to the political resistance movement in Iran. After encountering a rash Kadivar at a secret group meetup in Tehran, Kasim entered the fold, becoming a key ally in Kadivar's plan to undermine the government of the Shah. Javadi's arrogance, love of luxury, and carelessness left him vulnerable to CIA action once they chose to take it. 1911 form weapons shipment, Woodpecker. After killing Arash Kadivar, Russell Adler's team discovered that Kadivar had been moving crates of black market 1911s out of Turkey to an unknown destination. That's a pistol, right? A partially destroyed manifest acquired on the scene of the plane crash uh, on the scene of the plane crash mentioned Woodpecker, which could be the code name of recipient or location. Bullet extracted from Arash's target. Family feud, as Russell Adler, Frank Woods, and Alex Mason watched from a hidden location. Arash Kadivar decided to execute someone on the tarmac at Trabzon Airfield. Multiple someones. The whole car. It is possible the victim was an unaffiliated third party, but the CIA believes it was more likely an internal dispute of some kind. Based on the 45 bullet extracted from the victim's chest, Kadivar was using a 1911 from the illicit weapons shipment loaded on a nearby plane. Arash Kadivar's glasses. More than meets the eye. In Turkey, the CIA sees several items from Arash Kadivar's person, including his glasses. After a laboratory analysis, investigators discovered a narrow compartment embedded in the underside of the left lens frame. A curved hollow needle containing a small dose of tetrado tetrodotoxin, a powerful neurotoxin, was nestled inside the hidden compartment. 
Analysis speculate that Kadavar could have been carrying the toxin to either evade capture through suicide or to use as an additional close quarters weapon if otherwise disarmed. Amsterdam planning map. Greasing the hand. Hans Timmerman is the chief of police in Amsterdam Centrum, the historical heart of Amsterdam, Netherlands. In 1976, Russell Adler first met him at a late night poker game in Newmarket, where Adler not only took most of Timmerman's money, but also a mental snapshot of all of Timmerman's weaknesses. These included, but were not limited to, American dollars, fantasies about international espionage, and an irrational fear of exotic foreigners. He was just the man to exploit when Adler needed to remove the police presence from the area around Kasim Javadi's apartment. It would be a clear path from the back of D. Steer to Kasim's courtyard, and a short window of time to go weapons free without fear of intervention. Sketch of the apartment. Lifestyles of the rich and the famous. <laughs> rich and the infamous, even. Kasim Javadi purchased this apartment in cash less than a year ago, which exactly no one within the CIA believed was a clean transaction. Javadi has been partying in with friends, family, and cohorts in, seemingly in a seemingly endless New Year's celebration when Russell Adler and the company decided to make a surprise appearance. Many of the men there would be practice militants, but for the most part, Adler expected it to be a simple affair. He wasn't wrong. And last but not least, matchbook from D. Steer. Typical Woods. As Russell Adler prepared to leave Langley in late January, he briefly discussed his plans with Lawrence Sims to resurrect the old CIA evidence board at Safehouse E9 in West Berlin, starting with intel from their recently completed missions in Amsterdam and Trabzon. Frank Woods, who was listening nearby, walked up to Adler and placed a hand on his shoulder. Woods lifted up a matchbook from the bar in Amsterdam and waved it in front of Adler's face. Leaning toward Adler with a serious look, he said, Hey, a souvenir for your fucking board. Who is Adler to disappoint? <laughs> Sweet, okay. And then the next mission, Fracture Jaw. <laughs> Bell, <laughs> big Bell guns. Amazing. <laughs> in 68... The CIA orders Russell Adler's, Russell Adler's SOG team to secure a valuable asset hidden in Da Nang Firebase. Oh, wait, are we in the 60s? Why did I think we were in the 80s? Or is this is this a flashback? Like, maybe this is a flashback. Because it says 1980 up here. I should pay more attention. Uh, let's examine the evidence then. Photo of Camp Haskins, 8,000 miles from home. Located just north of Da Nang, Camp Haskins was part of a conglomeration of US military bases that supported the Army, Marines, Navy, and Air Force. I guess this is what they were talking about. They said, the dude said, like, I had a feeling that mission wasn't really done with us or whatever. I guess we're going to be going back and playing through that mission now. Russell Adler's MACV SOG team was briefly stationed there in the fall of 1967 into the early winter of 68. This photo was taken on a rare day without rain during the region's winter monsoon season. It was during this week at Da Nang that Adler's team discovered evidence of Perseus activity in Vietnam. Photo of Adler and Sims. Shared joy, shared suffering. After Lawrence Sims graduated from Rochester Institute of Technology, he entered the army, where he served for two years before joining the ranks of the CIA. His first major assignment placed him on Adler's MACV SOG team in Vietnam, where he immediately became one of Adler's favorite cohorts. By the end of their time there, Sims was also Adler's most trusted confidant. He, had be he has been a mainstay on Adler's various teams ever since. The Army Calendar 67. Biding their time, the Studies and Observation Group became, co began covert missions in Vietnam in 64. In 67, Adler and his small team of MACV SOG operatives were sent by the CIA to the Kang Nam province in central Vietnam. While training and often operating alongside the other, the other battalions that moved in and out of the area over the months, Adler's group had an ear to the ground, listening for any word of Soviet activity. When a viable rumor appeared, they would move on their own to investigate. It wasn't until January 68 that the CIA finally confirmed the presence of Perseus. Fracture jaw memo, a knockout blow. The events in Da Nang during January 68 revealed an embarrassing vulnerability in the fractured jaw plan. It was immediately scrapped before any additional damage could be done. What's this? From General Lesland Kamusma to Admiral Bridgemore something. Uh, Fractured Jaw has been approved by me. Publication is now in progress and plan will be dispatched by Armed Forces, Courier Service 11th of Feb. S ETA, Honolulu, Armed Forces, Courier Station, that. <laughs> okay. Fractured Jaw nuclear device, uh-oh. Keeping one's weapon out of another's hands. As the fortunes of US military in Vietnam declined, senior military officers, including General William Westmoreland, began to enact a top secret plan, the deployment of tactical nuclear weapons in Vietnam. Perseus learned of this plan, codenamed Fractured Jaw, as well as the storage location of one of the first bombs sent into the country. 
And last but not least, Lawrence Sims Survival Knife. Sometimes you need more than your wits. One morning in early January 68, Operator Lawrence Sims left Danang Air Base with Yusaf Airman Darren Kopp for a routine recon mission. After experiencing mechanical difficulties, their chopper touched down in a jungle clearing 15 miles outside the base. While waiting for assistance, they were ambushed by Viet Cong and forced to flee into the jungle. Kopp was killed in combat. Sims, ammo exhausted, took Kopp's knife and circled the clearing perimeter. He managed to take out three soldiers by hand before reinforcements arrived and secured the malfunctioning chopper. Sims never parted with the knife after the incident. It now hangs from the board as a good luck charm. Cool. Well, looks like we are ready to go. That is that is the most reading I have ever done in a Call of Duty game. That is probably more reading than I've done in all prior 16 Call of Duty games put together. <laughs> that, is, that is a very uh, different route for uh, COD to go. <laughs> it's normally just all action all the time. Let's uh, take a look around what else we can see before we go, though. Just change channel. I'm going to need to process some of these old negatives. You can hit that whenever you're ready. The dark room's mostly functional. Just waiting on a couple more deliveries to finish it up. Wasn't there an option to talk to her a second ago? Have I missed it? <clears throat> oh, now I can. Power things, Bell. Interested in Vietnam stories? In this case, quite. I understand you may have first-hand knowledge that could help us. I don't think I've talked about Vietnam in years. It must be difficult, Bell. I can't claim to have experienced what you have. Perhaps going over it again could be... therapeutic. You look familiar. Have we worked together before? You and I. Now that I think about it, I'm sure I've seen your face around Sentry House once or twice before. But these days, I'm seldom in London. Anything I can help you with? Well, I'm keen to hear about your time in Indochina. So close to Perseus. What do you know of Perseus? Not nearly as much as I'd like. I have experience with others like Perseus. They're all chess players. I enjoy predicting the next move. Well, I'll leave you to it. We'll talk again soon. Sup. Bill. How long have you been with the CIA? Working with the CIA over a decade. On their actual payroll? Going on about five years. <laughs> I was born in DC. Parents moved to Israel when I was a kid. Dual citizenship has its advantages. I bet. Israel? Yeah. I landed in the Israeli Defense Forces out of university. Did a tour there. After that, the Mossad. That's when I first started working with the CIA. And occasionally, I'm boss man Adler over there. Did you know of Perseus before this mission? You probably know more than me. I guess it's something the top brass wanted to keep to themselves. I imagine. <laughs> Later. Enough talk. Sims. Heavy. Hell yeah. One sec. I want to stop. And as we look back to this day. Stop. Bell, you're looking a little pale. You up for this? <laughs> Is he saying that because I chose the whitest fucking skin tone? <laughs> uh. I don't know, Da Nang was rough. Don't get soft like Sims. If we survive Vietnam, we can survive talking about Vietnam. Tell it to my strength. What's up with the evidence board? We're placing key intel up there. One for each mission. Forming connections. I want a red line right to Perseus. Why talk about our Da Nang mission? It'd be good for Park to hear it from us firsthand. Maybe we have overlooked something. So what's up with Park? Why does she seem so familiar? You probably crossed paths at MI6. Yeah, that's the answer she Maybe gave. You have a special rapport. Keep it professional, Bell. That's the answer she gave that we must have crossed paths, but the fact that you can bring it up with both of them makes me think it's more than that. How long has this Safe place house? been in use? I've done time here before. Years back. This go round? Just a few days now. Ask Lazar, he can't get enough of safe houses. 
So you've worked with the Lazar before then? We've done some jobs together. Good guy, you'll like him. He keeps things light. That's it. Don't be a stranger. Never. Can I talk to Sims? Like it's... What's his name? That guy back in Vienna. You know. <laughs> Come on, baby. How's the shoulder? Can I? <laughs> no. Is there anything else for me to see or interact with? It's a decently large place. Can't go in there. I think that's everything then. Oh, what about down here, actually? Ah, oh, you teasers. It's open, but I can't go through it. Okay, well. Wait, can you talk? I wouldn't keep Adler waiting too long. Okay, I thought it was gonna, I thought there was gonna be more to say. Well, that is where we will leave off the first episode. I wonder... Take a look at Danang on the board. I wonder how much, uh... There, how many of these little like talky sections, talky reedy sections there'll be? I'm interested. It's a, it's definitely a change from from past COD experiences, but uh, it's interesting. I like I like getting more detail on what we're doing and who we're up against and everything. It's good to see. So we will leave it there for part one. Next time we'll be jumping straight into the mission. Cannot wait. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, if you can leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share the video around if you can. I would really appreciate that. And if you really like what I do, there is a Patreon link in the description. Anything you could afford to send my way would be hugely helpful with the ongoing running of the channel and the buying of these new games. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time for more Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Thanks again, and I'll see you then.